Hello everyone. While having your fruits and vegetables, have you ever wondered how many chromosomes these fruits and vegetables have? How much of DNA might be present in it? Or if it is at all possible to isolate the DNA easily at home or would you need a laboratory setup? Well, today we are going to perform an experiment where we are going to try to isolate the DNA from very common vegetables or fruits. However, for this experiment, we might need a laboratory setup because not all reagents required here are easily available. So, let's get started and let's see what are the steps that are to be followed in a laboratory to be able to isolate DNA from fruits or vegetables. These are the following things that we will be requiring for the experiment. A glass rod, a grater, two test tubes, a funnel, a large beaker, muslin cloth, one or two small beakers, a mortar pestle and a dropper. We will also be requiring a raw papaya, and for extracting the DNA, we can use any material. Now you can use plant tissues, you can use animal tissues as well. Today I will be using plant tissues, so I can use an onion, spinach leaves or banana. It is better to take a specimen which has high chromosome number. We will also be requiring some dish washing detergent. This detergent acts as a source of lipase for the experiment. We will just dilute it a little bit. So I'll be using a little bit of water and I will stir it with the glass rod to make it into a nice soap solution. Last but not the least, we will be requiring chilled ethanol. Now this ethanol, you can keep it in ice bath to keep it chilled or you can keep it inside the refrigerator and take it out right before the use. First, I will prepare the papaya extract. I'll show you how to do that. But why do we need the papaya extract? Because this papaya extract contains a protein digesting enzyme called papain, which we will be using in one of the steps. So first, we will cut the papaya. So I have cut the papaya into two. Now, I will be using the grater to grate it so that I can extract the juice from it. So I'll use one of it and I will be grating it. So now that we have converted this papaya into a fine grated matter, we will have to extract the papaya juice from here. For that I will be needing a beaker. Now I will take a muslin cloth and I will take the entire grated papaya in this muslin cloth. After this, now I will be simply twisting this muslin cloth so that the extract comes out. Try to take as much extract as possible. This is enough for the time being. So today we will be using banana as the source of DNA. So I first I will be peeling the banana and I will take it in the and I will take it inside the mortar and paste pestle. So I'll make small pieces of it. This is enough. And now we'll have to make a paste. To this, I'll be adding some distilled water. Not too much, about 10 ml. And a pinch of non-iodized salt. If you see that the slurry is becoming a little too thick, you can add a little more water to it. I want a nice paste which is not very thick. At the same time, it's not very runny. Now, when we made this into a paste, we are hoping that while grinding this or converting it into a paste, the cell wall of the plant cell will break. Usually, in a biotechnology laboratory, we use cellulase to digest the cellulose but here while making the paste we are hoping that the cellulose cell wall has already been broken down. 
we are trying to reach the dna which is present inside the nucleus so after removing the cell wall the next membrane that we have to remove is the cell membrane and the nuclear membrane so as you all know the cell membrane and the nuclear membrane consists of or is made up of a large amount of lipid on which proteins are floating so if i can use a lipid digesting enzyme then i can break down both the cell membrane and the nuclear membrane so what i'll do now is I will use this, you can use a strainer for this. I am using a muslin cloth and with this I will strain out the extract so that we get a clear solution. I don't want this, these clumps to be there. You can use a normal strainer. See you can just squeeze the muslin cloth. And you will get the extract out. So this is your banana extract. Now I will add soap solution here. I have already prepared the soap solution. So I will add the soap solution. Why are we adding the soap solution? Because we want the cell membrane and the nuclear membrane to be digested. Now as you know the dishwashing detergent soap contains lipase in it which is used in breaking down the lipid that is present in your food or in the oil of your food. So I am therefore using this as a source of lipase to break down the cell membrane. I am stirring it so that this easily dissolves. I am using a glass rod to stir it. So that this entire thing mixes well and if there is any cell membrane or nuclear membrane in the cell that gets dissolved because I want to open it then only I will be able to reach the chromosome and therefore the DNA. Now once I have done this now I will be using a protein digesting enzyme. Now why use a protein digesting enzyme? So we have removed the cell wall, the cell membrane and the nuclear membrane but we are yet to reach the DNA because the DNA is in the since it's a eukaryotic cell the DNA is in the form of chromosome and what does chromosome contain chromosome contains DNA 45 percent RNA 10 percent and protein 45 percent so even if we do not remove the RNA because we do not use RNA's enzyme we at least should remove the protein so that we get DNA all right so for removing that protein we will use a protein digesting enzyme here we are using papaya extract so i'll stir the papaya extract well and i will take almost equal amount of papaya extract as we have whatever the amount of liquid is and then give it a good stir now when you are mixing this with the papaya extract basically you are hoping that the proteins that are present along with the DNA they are digested and what you are left with is basically only DNA. So now I have stirred it well. The next step is trying to separate the DNA for that I will need a test tube. I will take a small amount of this solution in the test tube let's say this much and now I will be adding the chilled ethanol here to create a density gradient so that the DNA comes floats out and get accumulated in, at, in the junction between the chilled ethanol and this content. So I have taken chilled ethanol in the dropper and look at the way I am pouring this chilled ethanol. I will simply be holding the test tube in a slanted position. And I will trickle the chilled ethanol from the sides because I don't want the chilled ethanol to mix with the content. I want it to remain separate at the same time I need them to form gradients. So here I have taken the chilled ethanol and as you can see now slowly the DNA has started coming out and it has started accumulating in the junction between the chilled ethanol and the content. So I will allow it to rest for a moment. 
I will not move this. I will just allow it to rest for some time for the DNA to separate. So as you can see the DNA is slowly floating up. It has formed a cluster here and it is slowly floating up. So this is the DNA that we wanted to isolate. If you want you can actually take it out with the help of a glass rod or a spoolie. I will just touch the DNA to show you what I am talking about. So this you can see this floating mass of white matter that I am pushing here. This is the cluster of DNA. So that is how we isolate DNA from banana. You can try isolating DNA from other fruits and vegetables and you can find out how easy or difficult it is. Please note that whenever you are choosing the fruit, vegetable or animal tissue from where you are isolating the DNA, their chromosome number makes a lot of difference. So, if the chromosome number of that species is high, the possibility of extracting the DNA from them becomes much, much more. So, I really hope that you enjoyed today's experiment. For more such experiments, please subscribe to our channel Manocha Academy and hit the like button. Do not forget to hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of our videos. Please visit our website Manocha Academy and Android app where you will find full courses on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology. The links are all given below. So let's stay connected together and let's keep learning. We are going to find out if we can isolate DNA from the products that we easily get at home. Well, not maybe what. And what that would that. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give us a like button. Huh? Please give us a. I really hope you enjoyed today's experiment. We will come back with more such experiments. I hope you enjoyed today's experiment. We will come back with more such experiments. But for that, you have to like and subscribe to our channel Manocha Academy. Please go to our website Manocha Academy and our Android app where you will find full courses on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology.